Hello, hello, hello and welcome, welcome to my little capsule. This video is a small part of my tutorial series called Interactive Architecture, where I'll be showing you how you can make all sorts of different things with Unreal Engine. Today, today we're gonna learn the basics, basically how to get geometries into Unreal. But in further videos, we're going to dive much, much deeper. For example, we'll learn how to change the cameras from third person to first person, we're gonna learn how to control things with our voice. Notice my face. Mwah. We're gonna learn how you can open and close things the proper way. And a little treat. There's a little treat hidden behind this door that I'm not going to show you right now, but I'll tease it with one word, grasshopper. But let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's dive into it. Okay, so the first thing that we will need to do is, of course, launch Unreal Engine. And you can just simply do it by clicking this button right here. That's going to start it. And if we just give it a second, it's going to load in quite, quite quickly. This menu will pop up. In this menu, uh, you can either open up an existing file or you can create a new one. And you might think that just going for architecture blank uh, or ArcVis uh, template would be the correct way to go. I personally prefer to just go for games, third person um, game, right? Uh, the, it's not like you will be locked out uh, from any functionality of ArcVis templates. Uh, when you select the third person game. So uh, might as well use this template because it has the character already in it, which is important. Uh, we will be using blueprints for our scripting and we will go for desktop, maximum quality, no starter content, but ray tracing, yes. This depends of course on the graphics card that you have, uh, any graphics card that has RTX at the start of it, Nvidia graphics cards can handle ray tracing quite well. Then you simply give your project a name, I'll just say uh, CRT YouTube and click on create. This will take a little bit of time as it's going to initialize and uh, create all of the shaders and so on, so let me just skip ahead and uh, start talking once it's done. Actually, as it's still creating the, the, the shaders for me, I think we're at, yeah, 45% right now. Let's talk about additional plugin that I really like using uh, to get my geometry out from any 3D modeling software that I use, and that's called Datasmith right here. So we can see here that we have 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, blah, 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 and we have Rhino 3D. That's my primary 3D modeling uh, tool that I use. And basically, Datasmith works as an interface to get your geometry out from those programs into Unreal Engine. Very, very convenient, very useful, very easy to download and install. It works like a plugin. I will show it in action right now um, in Rhino. So here in Rhino, this is my 3D model that I have. If you want to follow along step by step, meaning if you want this particular 3D model of a Nagakin capsule, uh, tower capsule, hmm, consider becoming a Patreon supporter and helping out the channel because I give out all of the models and so on for free for the Patreon supporters. Link in the video description. But if you don't, uh, then just use whatever model you have lay laying around. Anyway, after you install Datasmith into your, in this case, Rhino, you'll get this kind of a menu box right here called Datasmith, which enables you to synchronize your model um, or even have auto synchronization with an opened version of Unre uh, Unreal Engine, right? Or you can just export the 3D view. I personally prefer to export the 3D view into a separate U Datasmith file simply because uh, this the live link, the synchronized live link between the two programs sometimes tends to mess things up for me. Materials are lost, uh, stuff doesn't transfer cleanly, some stuff gets overwritten. It 
has the potential to become a mess so i personally prefer to use the regular export 3d view the way you do it is you just click on the button you click where you want to save it and it's going to save this udatasmith file together with a bunch of files i will show you them and here they are so there's the udatasmith file and the nakagin assets folder these two folders were exported as i was uh, using the datasmith export function uh, the udatasmith file contains information about the material what the pos relative positioning of every single part of your 3d model while also the units and so on while the assets are literally every single piece of geometry is saved as a separate file right here and it's unreadable because it's uds mesh right the data smith mesh which uh, is uh, only unreal engine can read it so it's quite safe in that regard anyway so once you have this done once you have this exported technically at that point you don't really need to have um Rhino opened up anymore, so I'll just close it. All right, so now let's talk about Unreal. So let me just quickly guide you through what is it that you're seeing here. Your viewport clearly is right here, right? That, that's your, your viewport. This is like the default map. If you press the play button right here, you will be able to run around in the map, jump, and so on, right? And also it showcases that you can interact with the objects, move them around. Let's stop playing. So that's that's your uh, map. What I want to do with it is I want to delete everything that we literally everything that we have in the map. So I'm just going to type not type in but hold Control A and hit delete, just so that we can start at with a clean slate. There's also world data layers and world partition minimap. That it's fine. If you don't want to do it this way, you might not, right? If you want to keep it, you can always go to Content Browser right here. And under Third Person, right here, under Maps, you can create your own new map. Let's do that, actually. Right-click anywhere in this folder and create a new layer, like so. Call it... Uh, whatever you want. I'll just call it uh, CRT YouTube. Consider subscribing. No. Uh, I will double click it. Uh, yeah, sure. Save, save the files. And now this is where my new level is going to be. You can see it's quite bare. It doesn't have anything in it. So let's populate it with stuff. So first thing is, oh, by the way, the content drawer is a little bit, well, it's not, not annoying, but you will notice that the content drawer, as I'm clicking on the viewport, it minimizes. It's, it's uh, something that you either learn how to use, or if you're like me, you click on the dock in the layout um, right here, so, so that it actually dogs uh, docs as a content browser right so now uh, let's create some light first of all in the scene uh, i will go to um, the, 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 the the tools tab sorry the windows tab right here in the top and i'll choose environment light mixer this is a very overlooked tool that is super useful because it creates light really quickly and you don't need to worry about it as much environment light mixer that opens up this new tab right here and we will just choose to or click on these all five buttons all in a row create skylight create atmospheric light create sky atmosphere create volumetric clouds and create height fog as easy as that we have ourselves an environment now let's create a plane a ground plane so i'm just going to go here under quickly add to the project under basic I'm sorry, not basic. Under shapes, I will choose plane, like that, plane. You can see that plane is created right here. That is expected. Uh, and we will be able to 
change the height of the plane and the sorry not the height but like the position of the plane and so on either by using the gumball uh, that you can change here from movement to rotation to scale or we can go to this tab right here that's called details make sure that the plane is selected by the way to details and here you can choose the location of the plane so i'll zero it out zero 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 for the transform and the scale of the plane if you have lost the plane and you don't don't see where where the hell it is you can always press uh, select it in this uh, outliner right here select it and press f f is focus so you focus on the plane um you focus on the viewport on the plane then i will just give it a scale of let's go for a thousand by a thousand by a thousand so we get a pretty large uh, surface uh, so far so good let us create our character so now if i press play the character is spawned but we have no idea where it's going to be spawned right so we need to first uh, give it a starting position right so i'm going to use this uh, quickly add to project tool again not tool drop down list and under basic i'll find player start like so it creates this capsule thing right here so now wherever i place this capsule in the world that is where my player will be spawned what's up with that eh, we'll fix it later <laughs> It doesn't like the size of the plane and <laughs> the, the, the fact that the plane is scaled. That's fine. Right. So with that done, or maybe we can just drop him from further out. With that done, we will import our 3D model now. So under content here in the um, in our content browser, under content, we have, you know, like the characters, prototyping and so on. I'll just right click and create a new folder. And I'll give that folder a name of Nakagin. Just Nakagin, because that's the name of my um, building or capsule, right? And inside of it, I will add, I will import the Datasmith file. So now the first thing to do is actually to get Datasmith running in our Unreal project. So I'll go to settings here in the top, top right, settings, plugins. Click on that. Type in Datasmith and choose Datasmith CAD Importer right here. This plugin right here. You tick mark it. So Datasmith CAD Importer. Tick mark it. It will ask you to uh, restart Unreal, uh, Unreal Engine. We will click it. Save selected, and it's just going to restart real quickly. After it has restarted, we can just simply close this plugins tab right here. Make sure that you navigate to third person, maps, open up your map, because um, by default, it's always going to load in third person map. If you don't want it to happen, go to settings, project settings. maps and modes and here editor startup map you choose your own map right here and while we're here game default map you can also choose that you don't need to restart anything from now on your map is going to be the one that's going to be loaded in, in so we double click on our map now we're here we're back to here i actually want to make the scale of this a little bit less so let's do 100 by 100 by 100 oh, oh, by this i mean the plane i select the plane i type in its scale 100 100 100 right here you can also lock so that you only need to type in you know in either one of these boxes and now after we have enabled datasmith i should be able to quickly add to the project here see the datasmith tab and i can choose to file import 
Notice the direct link import. That is the thing that I don't like using because it tends to sometimes like 0.1% of the time it messes up your file. I don't want to take the risk, so I'll just use file import, which is static. It's not dynamic and I'm in full control. Click that. It asks you where do you have your datasmith file, so I'll navigate to it. Right here, this one. I click open. It asks me where do I want to add it. So I'm just going to select my folder that I have created, knack again, hit OK. And it's going to ask me what is it that I actually want to import. So this is where it gets a little bit, well, not tricky, but it depends. If you already have your file that is done for, let's say, V-Ray render or any kind of other render engine, then you most definitely want to import the materials and the lights and so on. In my case, I don't, right? In my case, uh, I want to do it from scratch. So this one is going to be just importing the geometry, right? So I just click on import uh, for advanced settings. These are my advanced settings that I use just in case. I click on import and now it's going to slowly, well, by slowly, I mean quite fast, load in all of the geometry that I need. There are a few things to note about it. Since I didn't select any materials uh, to be important, this is not going to have any materials, but the shading of it still works, right? Uh, sorry, shading, uh, texture mapping, UV mapping is uh, for these objects is still there. So whatever you have as an UV map, that still works. One thing that you will notice is that I can simply go through my model. That is a no-no. So let's fix it. The way you fix it is by going to the Nakagin tab, you can see that now here, under your main Nakagin folder, a new folder called Nakagin was created. That's not ideal, but it is what it is, where you have your datasmith scene right here and your geometries. If you double click and open up your geometries, you can see the previews of them. You want these geometries to have two things, uh, to do two things. First thing is, let's hold, uh, holding the shift key, I'm selecting all of them. So you select the first one, you hold the shift key, or rather you scroll down to the end of the list, and then you hold the shift key and select the last one, thus selecting all of them. You right click on them, and you choose Nanite, and you choose to enable Nanite for selection. What this does is basically uh, enables a new type of remeshing tool that, well, active remeshing tool that's available only in Unreal Engine 5 and so on, that uh, enables you to have millions upon millions of these geometries without crashing the computer. It's excellent. There are drawbacks to Nanite that I'm going to talk about in just a second. But while you still have these selected, we still need to enable the collision, right? So you right click on these, you choose Asset Actions, Bulk something, Bulk Edit via Pro Asset Actions, Bulk Edit via Property Matrix, right here, which will open up this kind of new, new tab for you, like that. There, these are like the settings for all of for all of these meshes that are shared. So under search, let's type in C O L L collision, <laughs> right? C O L L E J N, and let's find collision complexity. This one right here, double L. If you can't find it, collision is with double L. Collision complexity. And instead of project default, we will choose to use use complex collision as simple. This means that the geometry itself is going to be a colliding object. It's a little bit more costly, but for architectural visualization and then like interactive architecture, it's important to use it. We're not making a game here. Use complex collision as simple. File, save all, wait for it. 
close that press play and now I am colliding with with the object right so that's done right we have successfully imported geometry in terms of creating the materials I'm just going to show you uh, two materials in this tutorial and the next video that we're going to do is I'm going to show you um, more right more materials of how you can operate with them so I'm just going to under NAC again under uh, NAC again tab right here where we have our NAC again and geometries I'm going to create a new or rather let's do it in the main one I'm going to create a new folder and I'll just call it materials materials and in that folder I'm going to right click and create a material and let's call it glass no let's call it white first or white base white base that's our master material for anything that is white double click it this menu pops up and you can kind of dock it right here so that you have two tabs to go through your maps and your materials and here we have a little bit of a grasshopper situation going on where you can create a base color where you can choose if it's metallic specular roughness you know all sorts of different things so for base color i will just say um constant three vector Oh, uh, you drag out from base color and then you type in constant three vector like that where you can create any kind of color by just mixing R G B values or if you select that node just going into here and choosing uh, any color you want for instance white never use pure white never use pure black it always needs to be at least below 5% white right so somewhere here and above 5% black somewhere here so something like this hit OK it's gonna recalculate now you get your little white material I will not be doing anything else with this and I will just click on save white base perfect click close all right and I'm going to also create a second material that is going to be called glass so I right click here I choose material I choose type in glass like so double click it to open it up drag by the tab to dock it next to my map like so and here we will need to change a few things before we start plugging things in so because by default you can see opacity right here is not an active uh, input no 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 we need it active so here under the left hand side you can see blending modes is set to opaque nope that's a no-go we need to change it to translucent once I do that you can see opacity becomes enabled uh, besides that I believe here we don't really have anything that we need to uh, cast ray traced shadows that's perfect uh, ta -ta -ta. apply fogging that's perfect volumetric non well lighting mode uh, I don't want it to be non-directional I actually want it to be uh, surface translucency volume like so so the only two things that we change here lighting mode and blending mode Right? now we have our base color that we can or sorry base color now we have our base material with base color uh, that we can adjust so first of all uh, material or glass in Unreal Engine is usually white so for base color if you just plug in a number one that is going to be white if you plug in a number zero that's going to be black and I know I said don't use white except for glass is the exception use white for glass so I will just type uh, hold down key one on my keyboard and click and that will simply create um, like a slider thing uh, a number constant number input where I can change the value to one and I can connect it to my base color and also to metallic like that 
right? If you can't do it that way, I believe it's just a simple constant like so. You can create a constant like that, but just typing in one seems to be uh, easier. So again, one click, create another constant. Uh, we will deal with roughness now. I believe roughness uh, shouldn't be like one. It should be close to one, 0 0.98, something like that. Then we will do opacity. For opacity, I'm gonna use almost fully opaque, so 0 0.1, like 10%, um, sorry, almost fully transparent. So 10% opaque. You can barely see the edge right here of the sphere as I'm moving it around, but it is still there. So there's a little bit of fogging going on. Uh, but the problem is that now the glass doesn't really bend light. So what we need is we need refraction. And for refraction, that's going to be a little bit more difficult. Let's grab another slider uh, constant right here. Again, holding down the key one and then clicking or typing in constant value. This is going to be our index of refraction for glass just from the top of my head, it's 1.52, I believe. I believe it's 1.52. If I connect it to refraction, you can see that it's kind of doing something. I mean, now it's refracting right here, but it doesn't really look like we're looking at a sphere, right? And that's a doozy, that's, that's a no-no. So this needs to work according to the angle at which we're looking at. Uh, the surface, right? So for this, we need Fresnel reflections or Fresnel, I don't know. F-R-E-S until you find Fresnel, Fresnel, Fre Fresnel, I don't know. Uh, we don't change any settings right here, but basically we will, we have this value and Fresnel reflections means that if we look at the object directly, then the refraction is one. If we look at it at an angle, then the refraction starts increasing up until 1.2. This is called linear interpolation, and in short, it is called LERP. L-E-R-P, LERP. Linear interpolate. This. So, as I said, if you look at the object head on, that's one. The refraction value is 1. If you look at it from an angle, that's 1.52. This one right here, right? And the alpha is actually the Fresnel. That's what's kind of controlling the, the bend, like that. And that's it. Now you have refraction. Notice how now this is much more, this looks much more like a sphere, like a proper sphere. That is because it's bending light more on its edges rather than the center. The center doesn't bend light while the, while the edges bend light. That's it. We have done our gl glass material. We don't need to look at it ever again. Save this. <laughs> Famous last words. We will come back to it in the next video. So we have our glass, we have our white base. Now I will, uh, I, I will make it simple. I will slap on the glass onto this surface right here. Bam. Nothing changes. Oh no. Okay. So I take my white base and I just slap it on here. It changes. What if I take my white base material and drag it on here? It also changes. What about glass? Doesn't change. What happens? Nanite. Remember when where we created nanite? Nanite actually does not work with transparent objects. So what we need to do is we need to select this object that we want to be glass. We need to, uh, once we select it, it gets highlighted in the outliner right here. You right click it in the outliner and you choose to browse to asset, which initially is just going to kind of show you where it is in your folders, so to say. Then you right click on it and where it says nanite, unfortunately for this one, you can't use it. So you disable it and then it becomes transparent. This is double glass, by the way. So that's why you still see some stuff there. 
let's go to the inside right ah, come on navigation w a s d q and e by the way if if it's flying too fast you can change the camera speed right here to a lower one so here same problem i select it right click it go to browse to asset so it's this guy right here right click nanite disable nanite and now we're good to go so back in materials glass slap on the glass and now we have our glass here right now it's transparent i can apply a little bit more right here a few more surfaces but i will probably keep it for a later uh, video where we're actually going to look at materials but the last thing that i'm going to show you is the light control here so holding control l control l l as in light control light right holding that you can control the angle of the light and how it moves through your geometry this is the thing that i love playing around with and then you well i accidentally created another light don't, don't do that but then you uh can literally guide your light at, to to any position you want it gets a little bit of getting used to but once you get used to it it's really really nice and now let's press play to finish off sweet we're inside we're inside of this Ooh. a little bit our character is a little bit on the big side <laughs> but it does work it does seem to to work and this capsule is very small but we are getting there right yay we're done we're done we have our geometry in happy happy so this is it for this tutorial. If you want to learn how to do uh, the materials, check out the next video, unless you're looking at watching the tutorial right as I am publishing it. That means the next video is still not out, but just check, you know, hopefully it is. Um, if you want these files, as per usual, they are available for Patreon supporters. So consider supporting the channel and subscribe while you're at it <laughs> enough of that i'll see you in the next one later